Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour. Welcome to something really, really cool. This is a couple of years old, but I never actually watched this tournament. If you want to see the ultimate macro challenge, or pretty close to one of the ultimate macro challenges, this is probably it. So it's a, four, it's a 2v2 map, four-player map. It's called Volcano. And we've got none other than Vivid against Excal, pretty much number one and number two players in the game. Down in the bottom right, with the GLA Vanilla and the Tank, this is the green player that is the green beast. Rarity uh, to see him playing nowadays. He's always playing Valorant. And uh, only basically plays Zero for upwards of $500. <laughs> he is Vivid. All the way up in the top left, we have the purple player with the GLA Vanilla and China Tank as well. This is the reigning World Series champion of 2023 and 2022, I believe. This is Excal. So, basically, in this tournament, this is just one game from the tournament. It wasn't even, like, the final or anything. This is just one game from, like, round three, Excal against uh, Vivid. Both of them have got past either one or two rounds already, and they're facing off against each other in this. This is a few games in to at least a year old, maybe even two years old. But I never even watched one game of it, but I just recently thought what would happen in these big macro-y games when you have a it's two different armies. Basically, it's like a GLA with power, isn't it? Um, because you're starting with tank and you're starting with GLA vanilla. And I think it varies between each game. You might start with USA and China. You might start with GLA and Tox. In this case, it's GLA vanilla and tank. So it's like GLA with power, but you've also got tank. So looking at both players, they've actually sold the tank base. Uh, they've built a power, kept a dozer, in Excal's case, and in uh, Vivid's. Well, I mean, you get you get a dozer, don't you? You get a dozer and a worker from both your CCs. And so far, Excal is coming through with his um, technicals, usual technicals to kill the workers that he does on pretty much all GLA mirrors. And Vivid is intercepting it. Vivid is a very smart player, very, very strong player. But yeah, I just wish we'd see more of him, but he plays a lot of Valorant. I heard he's actually quite good in uh, Valorant. Um, and he's obviously got um, a bit of a weird time zone compared to uh, the rest of us. Like, most of us are living in Europe and the US. Few, I mean, you've got, yeah, you've got one in Australia and then you've got one in Malaysia, which is where Vivid is. So the time zones don't always marry up to play with like people like Scuba or Vivid. And so, uh, yeah, we don't see as much as uh, from from Vivid as if he if he moved, moved to Europe. Let someone move him, please. <laughs> we might actually see him a little bit more. But yeah, sometimes uh, be interested to see even what time this game was played. Like, is it like six a.m. Vivid's time? Could well be. <laughs> I don't know. But Vivid. Does seem to be dominating, taking over the whole map. He's already kind of pushing Excal back here. Excal doesn't have really a line of a defense, but Excal is expanding up in the top right. Yeah, I didn't really think about a build. I just literally booted up this replay and watched it for the first time. I didn't even see a stream on this or any of the replays. I, I actually thought. Initially, you might see a mix of units, but thinking about it, GLA with power means that you can produce twice as fast for the GLA, near enough twice as fast. That's a painful pick off there for Excal. He needed that to get up. So I actually thought, yeah, maybe initially we'd see a tank war factory, GLA arms dealers, but actually, GLA with power. Can expand super quick. You can build all the tunnels and stuff. And uh, yeah, Excal so far is having a hard time here. Like Vivid's already in the base, killing the oil there of Excal. Excal's trying to um, expand. Well, to to a third or fourth arms dealer. Is that a third? Yeah, third arms dealer. 
But yeah, no no, uh, no tank units whatsoever. No tank war factory or anything. Vivid is just clearing up, isn't he? This is insane. He is just... Uh... Uh, Excal needs to do some serious comeback, and we're only like five minutes in. It, Vivid just seems to have this on lockdown, like where he was expanding. Just seems to have workers and technicals and stuff everywhere. Like usually, what, whatever game mode Excal moves over to, usually he's just a, a, a beast in it with a bit of uh, practice. But this is definitely uh, new territory, probably for both players. And, yeah, Excal is mounting a little bit of a comeback. He is clearing this top right position now. But Vivid is already on buggies. Already got a market. He's got a power with mines on it, an extra one. And Excal is not on a palace, actually. But he is clearing Vivid a little bit from the top. Vivid's always known to be a bit of a beast with Jule. Is Jule... When he plays is known to be kind of insane. He's not expanded there, but he's got pretty much everything else. Excal is uh, clearing from there, though. But these uh, buggies are a big problem, and that palace only just being built now in plain sight. The buggies could close that down. But is Vivid going to pop somewhere else and decide to fend that off? Because that's the only bit now where Vivid has been uh, cleared from some land. Excal's trying to save his power. He's still got a dozer, though, so even if he loses that, he can place down another one. It's kind of cool how Vivid's got a spare one and got mines on it. But Viv Vivid's in such a great position now economically. He's even built a China supply here. So, yeah, he's used the dozer to expand, whereas Excal just hid the dozer completely. Yeah, buggies can pick off these units so, so easily. And then the tunnel can finish off the RPGs, or the Jarman can finish off the uh, the RPGs, if there is a Jarman. But Excal's getting some buggies out now as well, and uh, actually trying to clear Vivid from this position. Vivid's gone back inside of his tunnel, I think, has he? Or did he only have three buggies left? No, he has gone back inside of his tunnel. Pops loads of buggies. He's just got so many more supplies, I think, and, and oils. Like, one, two. He's got two oils, x has zero. And he's got, like, what, 70% of the map supplies. So, yeah, I think x palace there is in a bit of danger, actually. x short on cash, I think, needs to get that. A mistake from Vivid not sending a worker down here. He's completely forgotten about it. But I think he's quite just happy and uh, content. x has that. Which Vivid could destroy. He's happy and content just to hold the map control, focus on the micro of the battles. She's got such a great position here economically, Vivid does. And now that palace, yeah, is going to take a massive, massive beating. Still alive, but the next barrage there is going to finish it off. Exile coming in to try and defend it. Palace is getting hit. Palace goes down. No more buggies now for Excal. CC being built for Excal. Maybe uh, Anthrax Bomb could, could save him there. But uh, Vivid's now moving from his second supply there. But he has, yeah, the majority of the supplies. If you look at Vivid's view, you can't tell me he's not feeling the confidence there. He could get that, but... I mean, if we press S, you can actually see Vivid's view. He's just frantically clicking on his war factories currently. But yeah, he, you could just chill now. Even if you were taking slightly bad trade-offs, as long as, long as you're killing Excal units, you're just so econ economically ahead at this point. Yeah, but that that could be killed. It'll give Vivid an extra 200 XP. Uh, Excal, it says, has been more efficient with his units because he's got, like, 600 more XP. However, I don't think Vivid cares at all. Um, Excal, could, Excal could even be level 5. But Vivid, just because just of his macro from the beginning, getting all the oils and the supplies very, very quick. Like I said before, he can afford slightly negative trade-offs and it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, Vivid very quickly expanding here after he's just cleared it. But Excal is pushing back in this position. 
Yeah, Excal just rebuilding his palace. He must have queued up a few buggies before he died. But how much of a chance does Excal has? He has a basically a quarter of the map compared to 75% of the map. For Vivid. And Vivid attacking from two sides now. This is mainly RPGs, which you probably will clear that, to be fair. Especially if he's got the AP rockets, but he doesn't have AP rockets. So Excal trying to push back. A lot of people probably would have quit already as Excal, but... Excal will make everyone work for their win still, but yeah, it's looking definitely bad. There's a Scud Storm up as well. I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't see two factions being built. Like, can you imagine if someone had to build two tank war factories or three tank war factories, micro inflamers and battle masters everywhere? Meanwhile, doing technicals everywhere. Uh, tech RPGs, TNTs, whilst expanding and everything. I think it's just far simpler for the players to go for GLA. Your money's m much more better invested in GLA, where units can produce twice as quick than like a tank war factory, for example. So a bit of a base trade. Well, not really a base trade, but a bit of a map trade going on. A bit of ground trade. Excal losing a huge chunk of his base here, coming in with an anthrax bomb there. We're looking at Excal's view. Two quads still alive there. There's another Skid Storm out. Yeah, Excal still valiant, valiantly uh, fighting, but don't really know how much of a chance he's got. Just because Vivid has so much around the map, so many economy, so much economy, so many supplies. He's got that now as well, so he's getting the free junk repair. Excal has next to no upgrades, apart from the. Uh, Buggy ammo and the scorpion rocket. Uh, but same for Vivid, actually, there. Doesn't have many upgrades either. Anthrax bomb coming in for Vivid. Gonna be on the main base on the production, I think. Excal continues to press, though. Yeah, that's a painful one. Excal with a sneak. But again, as long as Vivid's just trading off or even a slight negative trade off, more beneficial for him. But Excal is gaining a bit of momentum. No AP bullets for Excal. Vivid seems to be caught here with a little too few units. He's dropping down maybe too many markets. Like when you've got that much money and map control, do you really need to drop down that many markets? Because all he has to do is hold this and he just automatically wins. But I think he's dropped down so many markets and skid storms that actually he's lost a bit of territory now. Don't really want to give Excal any room to maneuver once you get the advantage. Otherwise, he will uh, he will snatch a victory from you still. It certainly makes this a little bit more interesting. Is Excal going to be able to mount some kind of a comeback here. He's against three Scud Storms, a ton of markets, and he's still building more, by the way, Vivid is. I think he realizes that Excal might be running low on cash. He just basically has to pop a few buggies, pick off these one by one. Excal's trying to expand here. There's a CC here for Vivid, but is there another CC? And that is the only CC. Oh, no, there's a CC here as well. Okay, so Vivid's on the double CC strat. It's a Fargo strategy. Uh, you did two CCs, you got twice the chance to win. So by that logic, Vivid should win this. Yeah, Vivid's built a bit of an army now and able to fend this off. He's building markets. Uh, he's got battle buses coming, Vivid, as well. And Excal, even though he tried to make a bit of a comeback here, I think this is going to get stopped. Vivid's also creeping forward with tunnels and RPGs there. Hitting Excal's main base. AP bullets now in play for Vivid. No AP rockets, I would like to see that. Especially since he's been having like 7 or 8k for a long while now. Excal's making quads. But his CC's about to die. I think he's probably going to be typing GG. 
Because what can he really do there? He's selling the supply. And Excal has been defeated. Yeah, that was quite a dominant performance there by victorious. Vivid. Like I said, that's the first one. This is the first replay I've watched of this kind of tournament. I'll, I'll be disappointed, not going to lie, if I go through this and uh, pick another game and it's all just uh, GLA with Power Spam. I have a feeling, though, that that might be the case. But we will, um, in the future, we'll pick out another one. I think there's a new Chimera between these two as well. Um, and we will uh, watch that and see how that goes as well. So I won't spoil the result. Maybe in the new Chimera, I'll spoil the overall result. I'm not going to cast every single game. I'm just going to pick out. I picked out, as always, the two um, the two chunkiest replays. This is number one, and I will do the next one in the future. GG, well played. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments. Do you think this could work any way different? Maybe like a China and a US? Could you mix that better? Or you let me know what you think. GG, well played. I'll see you in the next one.